Hi, my name is Amrita and this is Amrita by the book where today I will be doing my very last book tag for the year. <gasps> that sounds incredibly ominous until you realize that the year has actually come to an end. So we only have another two weeks left and I won't be posting anything the last week of December just because, you know, I won't. But I'm incredibly happy to be doing this tag as my last tag of the year because I was tagged by Margaret and it is part of a literary festival that she and her friends are putting together and it sounds amazing you know they have I think in excess of like 30 authors they have about 16 panels it's absolutely free and it sounds incredibly interesting and I'm going to link down to her video down below so you can check it out and um, she can explain it in her own words and the name of this tag which she devised by the way is Yola Book of Flawed and um, it comes from the Icelandic tradition of exchanging books for Christmas which is 100% a real tradition and I have loved it ever since I first heard about it. And it is also the name of the literary festival that Margaret and her friends are putting together in Portland, except it's virtual this time so everybody can participate. And can I just say that I am so envious of the kids that are growing up today because um, I often talk about like how when I was young, I really wanted to do all these fun different things, but it was always such a chore to find out more information. And I was just listening to Margaret talk about the different panels that she will be organizing for free but accessible around the world and I am so envious because you get to do such fun things and it's so easy to access that information so I really recommend it the first question is the name what is an unpronounceable or difficult to pronounce word you love so my family comes from the south of India and um, the language that my family speaks is called Malayalam which is famously one of the more difficult languages not just in India but anywhere in the world and one of my favorite words to say is Varaparam which is uh, banana. My dad had this story about when he was a young man and he was working with uh, another Malayali in Delhi at the time and this particular co-worker uh, was speeding and the police constable sort of made him pull over and then asked him what his name was and my dad's friend really thought fast and he said uh, my name is Onunya Varaparam which in Malayalam means dried banana and that poor police constable was from up north, from Delhi, and he was like, on what? And so ever since then, my brother and I, whenever we need to just, you know, give someone a name that we just need them to not remember, we just say, oh, my name? My name is Onanya Varaparam. It's an ancient traditional name of our people. Question two, the tradition. What is a new to you tradition or retelling of one that you love? I think my most favorite tradition that I discovered as an adult has to be Friendsgiving. When you are an immigrant to a country, um, one of the easiest ways to integrate or to feel as if you're a part of society is to celebrate um, some kind of festival or tradition that they do and in most countries such traditions are usually religious in nature and not everybody can participate and the great thing about Thanksgiving as an immigrant in America is when you come there it doesn't matter what your religion is or what your race is that is a celebration that is open to all Americans and to everybody who is in America it is possibly one of the most inclusive events that I have experienced in my life as a serial immigrant. Now, I was lucky enough to have family in the United States, so I always had a place at the table. But over the years, as I became an adult, um, I began celebrating Thanksgiving with my American friends. And then it just became like just friends in general. I believe over the past decade and a half or so is when the term Friendsgiving has become really popular because more and more people choose to celebrate it with their friends rather than their family and to me it is fabulous I love it 
It gets all my friends together. I get to eat really weird American food that literally no other part of the world can even understand, much less make. Question three, the adaptation. What is an adaptation of something you love that was made even better or equal? I was going to say the sound of music and then I read the question again and I realized that I had to love the original material as well and the original book of the sound of music is not that great. Fraulein Maria is kind of a dick in real life. So I think my vote would have to go to Lord of the Rings. I really enjoy the books. I haven't reread them in a while, but um, I always have a soft spot in my heart for them. Um, but I love the movies. I really do. I don't understand people who are like so mad that it wasn't more faithful to the adaptation because I have a very simple philosophy when it comes to movie adaptations, which is that a movie is not a book. If you can actually faithfully adapt a book, then that's great. But you have to understand a movie is a different medium and it caters to, um, you know, a section of the audience that might overlap with the books, but also a whole other section that doesn't. So it just makes sense for a good director and a good writer to adapt the source material in a way that that would be more accessible and more attractive to a wider bunch of people. And The Lord of the Rings could have been a very indie, very tiny, niche kind of film, but it wasn't. It became like this giant blockbuster. And I can't be sad about that or mad about it because it really pushed fantasy into the mainstream and made it possible for us to have so much amazing content over the years based on its success. Also, I love the cast. I love the set design. I loved pretty much all of it. And it's also very strong for me on a nostalgia factor because I have such strong memories of watching it with, you know, my friends, my family over the years, like so many different things. I love it. Question four, the mood. What is the coziest book you've read or expect to read this winter? Okay, I haven't read this book yet, but I intend to and I'm really excited about it. And it's called The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. And it's the story of a bunch of people who live in a retirement community and they meet every Thursday to solve unsolved murders. And then one day they have a murder right on their doorstep and they're like, oh my God, Christmas came early. It sounds hilarious and amazing and I really love nosy old people in fiction. In fiction. I'm a huge fan of Arsenic and Old Lace and of Miss Marple and like a whole bunch of those, you know, little old ladies up to no good kind of a thing and I really enjoy it and I can't wait to read this book. Question 5. The Discovery. Who is a new author you've discovered this year that you love? I think it has to be KJ Charles, who is an author I began reading earlier this year. I think it was earlier this year. I have no idea because, you know, what is time? But I have a distinct memory of buying her right before the pandemic, so I think it was this year. And I've spoken about KJ Charles before. You know, she not only writes amazing, queer love stories and historical fiction um, and also fantasy but also she does the most on-point reviews of books and I think it's because she comes from a background of being an editor but I have never known her to go wrong as yet. And I also like that she has a really varied taste in books, you know, it very much mirrors mine. We don't read the exact same list of books but uh, it's almost like she does a variation of my taste so I can just expand my boundaries and I love that. Question 6. The setting. What is the deepest darkest setting you've read about? I think there's like a couple of different ways that you can tackle this question and at first I was going to go with something that I'd read that was you know murdery. But then I decided to go literal and I think the deepest, darkest setting has to be 
Tamsin Muir's Gideon the Ninth. I mean, it's so dark that they have to wear really strong shades when they get out into sunlight. Like they literally live inside the earth in these underground caves full of skeletons. That's dark on multiple levels. The Hot Coco. What is a book that comforted you during a long night, literal or metaphorical? My answer to this question is always the same and it is one of many books by George Hale. Anytime that I am down, that I feel angry or upset or just out of sorts, the best way to get me back on track and to sort of calm me down is to read something by Hare. And it varies, like it's not just one book. It could be Frederica, it could be Venetia, The Grand Sophie. Um, it could be a bunch of different books. It really centers me for some reason. The banter, the back and forth, the happy resolution of the stories. These are all things that I need when I'm upset. Also, she's funny, so she makes me laugh. Question eight, The Gift. What is an indie book you'll be giving this winter season? So the only person that I buy books for is me. And there is one particular indie author that I have been meaning to check out for a long time that multiple friends of mine have recommended and whom I follow on Twitter, and she seems lovely. And that's Andali Dwajid. And she writes rom-com and uh, they're sort of set in India and they sound delightful you know she has a series that are about Indian weddings and like romances set in modern India without being exoticizing trash um, which is entirely my vibe so I am really looking forward to reading something by her right so I'm just going to tag a few people that I think would enjoy doing this in no particular order, I think Rosie should do this. Aramus, if she has the time. Jeremy Fee, who needs to do more book tags. Lady Jane Books, who loves book tags and gave me carte blanche to tag her anytime. You're gonna regret that. Literary Lizzie, who I think is going to be amazing at this particular tag. And lastly, I think uh, Shannon and a book who is absolutely lovely. And as usual, if this is a tag that appeals to you, if you think that you could do this or you want to do this, it doesn't matter if you're on booktube or off it, feel free to take it away and remember to check out the original tag by Margaret where she explains all the awesome panels that she has lined up for you this weekend actually. For more videos, please hit the subscribe button.